Well, hello there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Welcome to this gorgeous Airbnb in London, Ontario. Welcome to this episode of Spit and Bother and Access Consciousness Tools. <laughs> uh, really glad to be with you. I'm always really glad to be with you here every week. Um, so, hi Monique. How's it going? Okay, so I'm going to have a little fun this week. I, one of the things I wanted to start doing on these episodes is um, telling a few more stories of my life um, in an effort to illustrate some of the things that I'm using. Hi, Christian. Hi, Pilar. Um, hey, Maxie. Hi, Dominique. So I am. So we're going to get a little more clever with this show because there is going to be another show podcast coming that's going to be a lot more of conversations with other people. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I called this week's episode, I quit my business yesterday. <laughs> and it is actually true. I was walking down the stairs um, and I do this a lot and I'm going to talk in and around this with all the access consciousness tools and how I play with them. Uh, so this isn't the first time this has occurred, but I did want to talk about yesterday in particular, hi Angela, um, because one of the things that I am in the creation of is a, is a program and an invitation to you that's called Relentless Profit. And so as you guys know, because I've been talking about it incessantly over the last however long, uh, the creation of success in living and in my business is incredibly important to me and something I'm going after with all my guts. Hey. Um, I have a book that is officially like in the stages of publication. Uh, we're going to be launching on the 1st of January. So that's, there's been a lot of energy being put into getting that ready for publication and, you know, getting it in front of the right eyes and the, the right people to look at it. It's, it's going to be an access consciousness book. So it's going through all the channels to be approved and all that. Um, we're going through the cover design and all the things that you have to do to actually get something into publication. And I've been aware of for like two years, three years that, that I need to get a book out into the world. And I literally have six of them halfway done, if not further along. So it was just like choosing one and going. And anyway, I'm so excited to get that to you. But the topic today was yesterday I quit. And so you know, I'm in this really stunning house. I wish I could just sort of like take you around and show you. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Karinka. Um, and I'm also just doing what I do and I'm going through another big sweeping transition of where I'm living and who I'm living with and all the things that are changing. And in addition to that, there's been this three or four months that I've been on the road and I've been facilitating and taking a lot of classes. So like you guys that know what this is like after a huge, huge, huge swath of change, coming back, coming back or forward into daily living, everything's different. And I realized yesterday as I was walking down the stairs to come to breakfast that there was a big, big, big part of me that was doing hold back on putting anything out into, putting much of anything out into the world because I really it didn't have I didn't have a sense of what its form or anything was it, there was just that there's just been a lot of energies in my world and if any of you guys are playing on my energy pulls right now you've got a, a really strong sense of what those energies are I am going to be putting another set of energy pulls out in about 10 days so if you guys want to come play but blah 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 walking down the stairs to breakfast it's going to take me an hour to get this story out <laughs> And the sensation in my body was just like, I wish that I could just like go on vacation for, you know, six months and have somebody else take care of everything and give me the space to like write my book and just sort out what this wants to look like now and give me the time to just be. And I recognized that energy immediately because it had this sit back energy to it. It was like, oh, I'm just, I just want to sit back. Like I'm just, I'm kind of, it's, it wasn't that I'm tired, but it kind of had that sense to it. It's like, I just want, if I wish I could just like hang out and sit back and not do anything. And, um, it was kind of the first time I caught myself in this energy. So I caught myself and 
I recognized that that energy was what was creating a lot of what was showing up now in my business and in in the money flows that are attached to what you do with your business. And immediately catching myself, and this is the gift of awareness, is that you have another choice. I looked and flipped it around and I went, if I was driving this ship instead of riding where it's going, what would I choose? And I'm not kidding you, it was like an about face energetically and instantly I had access to a whole universe of awareness and choices and ideas and more clarity on everything, simply choosing to drive the ship. And over the next three weeks or something, you guys are going to hear a lot of conversations coming from me around what it takes to be relentless to in order to be profitable, in order to be successful, in order to create what you'd like to have in the world. And it doesn't matter what you need to be relentless with. Now for me, a lot of this conversation in, revolves in and around my business because that's what I do. Um, but I was reading in Blessed Possibilities today, which is a book by Gary Douglas, and he talks in one of the sections, the whole book is about phenomenons. Phenomenons, new English word. It's, it's where you have the ability to actually go beyond the, the extraordinary, the extra of the ordinary into phenomenons, which is actually the art of being a phenomena. And one of the things he says in this book is that we have to actually practice being happy. We have to actually practice being a phenomenon. It's not like something we come in knowing how to do. We come in knowing how to do a lot of deciding and concluding and being unhappy because we see that everywhere. Um, we come in kind of, some of us come in with mental health conversations in our world where, you know, we're taught how to like, I don't even know, uh, communicate and do all these things that don't actually really work, by the way. Um, but we're, we're not given lessons on how to be a phenomenon and we're definitely not shown how to be happy. So a lot of this stuff, a lot, almost all of it, that are the conversations that, hi guys, I see you all and thank you for your comments. Um, all this stuff we talk about in Access and all these tools we throw around require practice. And it never stops being relevant for me. It doesn't matter how far I get or how many likes I get on my page or how many subscriptions I get to my YouTube channel or how many books I get out in the world. The, the conversation of needing to practice something in order to have the success that I'd like to have in, in the world to have consciousness in the world, for me, um, it never ceases to be relevant. And I've realized lately that for me to drive the ship or take the ship of this business, these possibilities into the world, I have to be really willing to practice even more, practice at really being the captain. And, you know, for a lot of, I, for me personally, like, over the last however many years I've been doing this now, being the captain has been sort of this in and out thing. It's like I'm the captain and then I'm not, and then I'm the captain and then I'm not. And sometimes being the captain means like heading down into your, you know, your bunk for a while and like studying the charts, right? Like you're not actually up on the deck steering the ship. Um, to that effect, I actually watched a really, really cool uh, documentary on Netflix that I highly recommend called Inside Bill's Mind. And it's a three-part documentary on Bill Gates and how his innards sort of work. But one of the things that really struck me about him was, well, there was a number of things. There was a few things in particular that really struck me. One, as a, a multi-billionaire, he carries around a duffel bag of 15 books. Every single week, he's got a duffel bag of about 15 to 20 books that he reads, that he reads and studies. Two, when he was in his working life, he did something that was called a think week where he would, I mean, he worked inordinate amounts of hours when he was working for Microsoft. Like he worked longer and harder than anybody for the whole time he had his business, which is actually one of the other things that struck me. Um, that when you have something you're creating, hours don't actually count. You know, weekends aren't a thing, vacations aren't, you know, you're in it. But the third thing was like every, when he was in his working life, he did this thing called a think week. 
And it was where he literally shut off all his devices, which for a technical person is like, <laughs> interesting. Didn't have any internet, took his books and the, the subjects around which he wanted to study or, you know, inspire himself with. And he took a week and actually just like filled the well. And I love that term. I got that from Julia Cameron from The Artist's Way, where you take yourself on an artist date once a week and you do something called fill the well. And you gather and you go and you do things that are just for you, just for fun. And you go visit museums. You take yourself on a date that actually like inspires you and gets you working or using your creative muscles in a different way or at all. Because so much of what our lives are, are this institution and this doing, doing, doing. So he would take this think week and he would just like ponder things and ask himself different questions and look, but, and he always, always, always looked at the world as a whole. He didn't look at just Microsoft or just the business or his pocketbook. He looked at the world as a whole and asked himself questions around the world as a whole so that he could come up with creative solutions to the things the world as a whole was dealing with. And I, that has not left me. And I left that documentary like, so yesterday morning when I walked down the stairs and I realized I was sort of sitting back and waiting for the business angels to take over. I don't know what I was waiting for, but it was this sense of waiting. I realized that I could either, again with, and I've talked about this before, I could either keep doing that or I could literally just go, no, well, where are we going? And what can I create to, to get us there? And there was such a sense of empowerment that came from that and so much clarity that came from that. And, and I, I relate that to the documentary that I watched about around Bill Gates because I'm like, he had to constantly be looking at where they were going. He had to be looking at that. He had to know whether anybody else around him knew it or not, what they were gonna be on the forefront of. He would, he became a trendsetter and not a follower. And, and that's when I started, yesterday was when I started asking myself some different questions. Like if I was, I mean, it, there's so many varieties of this, but if I was truly willing to be the leader that I am, what would, what would I create now? If I was going to create a, a program, I'll give you an example, actually a very specific example. I've been looking at, since all of these changes in the last four months, five months for me, have been around being and knowing and perceiving and receiving. And so the way that I create business has completely changed. I've always been really, really good at doing. Always. My mom actually, it's every single time I talk to her on the phone, she, she likes to go into the past. And, and she's like, you know, honey, you've always had a really, really hard work ethic. Which is awesome. I'm really, really grateful for that because I can work harder and longer than almost anybody I know. Okay, cool. But what I wasn't strong in and what I've been really cultivating is being and knowing and perceiving and receiving and still doing because there's still doing in the midst of all of that. But just doing is different than the doing that comes out of being. The doing that comes out of perceiving and knowing and receiving. And what I am creating more of in the world is the space for people, us, if we want to choose more being, more knowing, more perceiving, more receiving. Why? Because that creates the planet I want to live on. And there isn't right now a business program out there that cultivates that. Because I haven't created it yet. Except I just did. And yesterday, as I was coming down the stairs, realizing I was on weight, I had been sort of musing over the last week or so, like, what do I want to create here? Because I... You guys are going to get to these different places and spaces where you have to ask yourself some different questions. You're the source of a different possibility in the world. Whether you choose it and you actualize it in the world or not, you are one. So there isn't any reference point for you. There's no reference point for what you can create. There's no reference point for the way you see the world. There's no reference point for the way the access consciousness tools come through you or any other tools come through you. You're the source of it. So if like a, a tree, you like cut off a section of the roots, then all the above ground stuff's gonna die. But if like a tree, you really nurture 
and nourish and cultivate your root system, your being and your knowing and your perceiving and your receiving, your leaves are gonna take care of themselves. Your leaves are the fruits. Money is the fruit of that. Business clients are the fruit of that. Um, you know, everything else in your life, your relationships, everything, your bot is the fruit of nourishing your root system. So what is your root system, right? Like it's sort of identifying, it's like, well, what's the roots of my business and what's the roots of my life and what's the roots with my body? And like, you know, what is what are the things that if I put my energy into are actually gonna move the needle, right? Not just like be a lot of doing, but move the needle. And where do I wanna move the needle to? All of that shit is stuff that you choose just because you choose it. Not because it's right or wrong or conscious or unconscious, but just because it's what you want to have as your life and as the world. So you're the source of all that. And there is no right and there is no wrong. There is only what you choose. There is only what you cultivate in the world. What are you, what are you doing? You know, how are you planting your garden? And how are you creating that for you and the world? Or are you? Or is that relevant? Right? There's so many questions to ask. And I realized yesterday, after I kind of realized I was quitting, that I could just begin to ask myself those questions and choose. Even though I was in another one of those phases where I didn't know how this wanted to show up, I did know, because I have done it, how to actually choose and just choose and go. And I want to invite you into an even greater practice of choosing and going. Because the thing that kills possibilities for you and the world and whatever it is you're creating is when you quit on you, when you give up, when you go into decisions and judgments and conclusions and trying to get it right, trying to get it right is a brutal, brutal habit. But what changes trying to get it right is just going around yourself and choosing anyway, like just choosing anyway. And I'd, I'd, I'd been waiting for this thing around business to grow enough that it had enough form that I knew cognitively what it was. And the thing about when you're creating something totally new in the world, you have as much information as you're gonna have at the time that you have it. And you gotta just go with that because that's how things are. You uh, like starting a new relationship, you have as much information as you have at the time and you just go with that and then you find out as you go. Um, starting a new gym program, you have as much information as you have about that at the time that you have it and then you just start and you go and you choose. Um, starting a new eating program, you can see where I'm going with this, like it doesn't matter what you're starting, you have the information you have at the time and you choose and you go and then you're going to get more information and more information because choice creates awareness. And so yesterday for me was I'm quitting and then fuck it, I'm choosing. Let's go. I'm driving this ship. I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I'm creating. I both have a sense of it and I both know that if I choose these things that they will create something greater in the world. That's all the information I need. So are you coming into your life with that much confidence? Are you cultivating confidence in you? Part of what's created the confidence that I have in me so far is all the clearings I've run and all the classes I've gone to. That's part of it. But a lot of it is the fact that I know when I choose, things create. Because I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So some of what you may need to do is mine your world for the places where when you have chosen, it has created. You've got to start looking for when you've, start, when you've succeeded with things. Because that will grow and nourish and nurture the sense of success in your world. Um, but part of it is taking where you're at now in this completely new space that you might be in right now and going, okay, fuck it. If I wasn't doing doubt, what would I choose? If I wasn't quitting, what would I choose? If I wasn't doing this, what would I choose? Just ask yourself a different question and then ask yourself, what would I choose after? Well, if I wasn't doing this thing right here, what else would I choose? And start to nurture and nourish confidence in you. 
You have never made a wrong choice. I do not expect you to believe me because I know you could point them out. But what if it was true? What if for today, you actually cultivated a sense of success for you and with you? What if you just looked and made a list of the energies that you would like to cultivate in your world? We spend so much time looking for where we're fucked up that we miss the opportunity, the possibility of looking at what we could nurture. Right now, you may be spending a lot of time nurturing wrongness in your world. And we have tools for that, to change that, right? If you pick up any Access Consciousness book, uh, watch any video, um, you can use who does this belong to. You can use interesting point of view. I have this point of view for every single thing that comes through your head, every single thing. But I want it, not but. Okay, so there's that. And what would you like to create with your root system in all areas of your life? So for me with my business, I am like, I'm realizing there's all these different areas that need care, right? If, I was, if I'm willing to be the carer of, the steward of what's been given to me, this business, you guys, this business is you guys for fuck's sakes. If I'm willing to be the steward of all of that, of your attention, of your time, of your money, of uh, the change we're creating in the world, and I'm the, the steward of that, then that's a different role than having to prove myself as a gift. So are you spending more of your time trying to prove yourself as a gift or are you being the steward of the resources that you have available to you? The resources that you could have more of? You know, I look at the financial part of my business and I'm like, am I stewarding that in the way that I'd like to? Not totally. Okay, what do I have to change? And so you make a choice there that moves the needle in that area. Am I stewarding um, this awareness that I have about what's available with business on the planet? Uh, not totally, but I can. Okay, I made a choice. That moves the needle. Am I stewarding this uh, ability that I have to write shit? <laughs> not totally. Okay, cool. I'll make a choice there that moves the needle. 80% of what occurs in your business, in your life, in your money, 80% of what occurs in all those areas is created with 20% of the choices you make. So what are you gonna start to cultivate for you? Are you going to continue to keep yourself busy with all the doing that you think should be doing something? Or are you gonna actually be the, the, the captain of your ship, man, the steward of this gift called you and the world? and begin to institute things differently. If you weren't busying yourself with avoiding, with quitting, with being wrong, and you could come at this thing called living differently, what would that be like? What, would, what other energies could you choose to function from than maybe the ones you've been choosing? And what could you add? Because I have no idea what time it is and it feels like forever. I'm gonna check. Oh no, we still have six minutes. Thank you so much, Claudia. Um, and I'm seeing your comments and I'm so grateful. It's really, really, I know I say this a lot. You hear this a lot in Access, like now's the time. Now is the time. Um, <laughs> hey, Bibby. Now's the time for us to be as great as we are. And the cool thing about being as great as you are is the only thing it requires of you is to choose to take up the challenge of you. You will be your greatest challenge because you're the only one that can stop you and you're the only one that can slow things down and you're the only one that can make it any less, make you any less than you really are. So would you like to keep doing that or would you like to choose something else? What would it be like to really cultivate the energies of success? To cultivate the energies of nurturing and nourishing you at your base? 
I love this, Jamie Joy. I'm choosing these things and watching my business explode. My home is so nurturing. I'm so lucky. Thank you for messaging me last year. Oh my God. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. And there's going to be so many more things coming out from my world to invite us all into that. These two words that I just, just keep thrumming through my universe, nourishing, nurturing, cultivating. That's three words, not two. Um, so many things I'm going to put out for you guys to play with, with me if they're a gift to you. And you don't have to pay for something to choose it. You can begin doing this now. What would it be like to take yourself on a date and go actually shopping for these energies? Go look for fabrics and homes and people that might be a gift to you in a way that you hadn't considered. Look into your money reality and go, am I cultivating nurturing for me here? Or am I cultivating avoidance and judgment? And what would it be like to cultivate nurturing? Look at the places in your life where you are actually being that foreign with you and see how you can extrapolate your willingness to be that here over into these other areas where you seem to choose to abandon you. You don't have to abandon you anymore. And you don't have to live confused and you don't have to live disempowered. You get to be happy and you get to be empowered, and you get to be great if you'd like that. Will you choose it? Will you cultivate it? Will you begin to practice happiness? Practice not judging you? Practice being relentlessly successful with everything in your world, with knowing, with being, with receiving, with perceiving? What would that even be like? What energy and space and consciousness can you and your body be to create a reality beyond this reality with total ease? Keep your eyes peeled. There is so much more coming your way and I can't wait to invite you. See you next week.